Hello, I'm Samantha and welcome to my channel. So when two of my favourite YouTubers who I've watched from the very beginning since Covid times, Stephanie Canada and Lady Rebecca Fashions set a Halloween challenge, I knew I wanted to take part. And the reason that I am dressed in <laughs> Edwardian fashion is that is going to be the theme for the costume that I'm making. So I think Stephanie and Rebecca initially took as the theme for their challenge the release of the Disney Haunted Mansion movie and there is a character in that, the Ghost Bride, who is inspiring my Edwardian costume. So she is a spooky gothic figure covered in lace and of course the fashion era above all others where they would be covered from head to toe in the most beautiful handmade lace pin tucks insert lace it is edwardian times if you're <laughs> curious about my costume the hat that i'm wearing is a genuine edwardian hat and the blouse i'm wearing is a vintage laura ashley blouse in the edwardian style so in today's video i thought i would tell you about my inspiration for my outfit and the patterns that i'm going to use when it first occurred to me that the ghost ride was the character that just stood out for me for my inspiration i immediately thought of a pattern from folkwear patterns that i have up in my loft and it is this one and I thought of it because it's the Edwardian bridal gown from Folkwear Patterns. Now, I didn't buy it to make a bridal gown. I bought it because I wanted to make the slightly shorter dress as just a lovely Edwardian dress. And indeed, in the description, it says, without a train, such dresses were considered summer Sunday best. What, oh, yeah, Sunday best dress. <laughs> and were worn to church birthday parties and other special events. So, the interesting thing about this pattern is that it was created using as inspiration two original Edwardian dresses. So it is a pattern based on a, original Edwardian dresses. And what the pattern doesn't mention, but I think is clear, is that it was based on what we often call lingerie dresses. So they were called lingerie dresses because they used pin tucks, the lace inserts, the fabric was floaty, it had these intricate details that you tend to see on lingerie. So they became known as lingerie dresses. And indeed, the Edwardian lingerie is some of the roughiest, most beautiful lingerie of all time. And I am going to be making my Edwardian outfit from the inside out, which is why I'm starting now. So I'll be making Edwardian drawers and camisole or corset cover. And I'm going to be using these patterns from Century Patterns. And they're also based on original examples. And I like to wear everything that I make. And I actually thought this lingerie is not unuseful. So I'm making it in a really pretty, finely striped, very good quality cotton that I got from the one off shop that makes Edwardian underwear and Edwardian clothes to sell called Darcy Clothing. 
and the fabric I got is fabric remnants from the shop so I bought up <laughs> meters here and there so that I have enough to make my own Edwardian underwear and I was looking for a uh, good quality ivory not bright white ivory colored cotton with a self stripe and I particularly wanted the self stripe to make my life easier <laughs> because of course if you're doing insertion lace it's really helpful to have the stripe of the fabric as a guide so that you can set it in and align it perfectly. So I'll be making the drawers in the carousel and I'm also going to be making a corset. And for everything that I'm sewing, the dress pattern is based on dresses from around 1905. So I wanted all the patterns that I'm using. I mean, the Edwardian period runs from about 1901 to 1910. So it's, it's a short period anyway, but <laughs> I got obsessive and I wanted all my garments to be within that very small <laughs> 1905 to 1906 time scale. So I found a seller on Etsy who had based her corset on a corset from 1906. And so that is the corset that I've chosen to make. I'll show you the pattern. And yeah, I'll just show you my, I do have an Edwardian mannequin, which shows you that very distinctive S-shaped silhouette, S-shaped <laughs> shape, shape that was the ideal of Edwardian beauty with the bust tilted forward, a tiny waist and then fabric gathered around your behind, <laughs> bottom. So the petticoat, and I actually have an original Edwardian petticoat that I'll probably be using. They are on drawstrings so you would pull the fabric around the drawstring to bunch it up at the back just to create that kind of extra fullness but I think I'll probably need a bum pad as well. So drawers, camisole, corset, bust improver and a bum pad and for the corset I do have this fabric but it's, it's not quite the right shade. It's fabric I bought when I was making a 1930s boned girdle, which I actually haven't shown on this channel. It didn't go entirely according to plan, mainly because for a girdle, you're supposed to take five inches off your natural waist measurement, the constriction. And I thought five inches sounded rather a lot. <laughs> And I took one inch. <laughs> well, I was wearing that. Flew, flew onto my sewing machine. Yes, yeah, as it turns out, detracts from the point of wearing a girdle. <laughs> it's nice and comfy and not too tight. So I need to make some changes to that girdle. But at some point, I'll sh I will show the making of a 1930s girdle. Anyway, I buy some more fabric for the corset. The fabric for the dress. Now, interestingly, the fabric recommended here, characteristically, it was cotton or uh, perhaps linen, but mainly cotton that was used for these dresses. Now, the ivory color fabric I bought is a viola, so it's 80% cotton and 20% wool. And in fact, the pattern for the shorter dress does say can be made in fine wools too. And I just quite like the addition of that 20% wool because this makes the dress potentially a bit more wearable between the seasons. Then we come to making the dress suitably gothic. It can't just be a pretty lingerie dress for a scary, spooky ghost ride. So what I thought I would do is taking inspiration from this lady here, who isn't particularly spooky, but is just doing what I want to do, is I thought I might add some jet black 
details to the ivory white. And indeed I have this really extremely beautiful, kind of exquisite really, jet black lace trim. It is genuine Edwardian trim. So obviously to be used with <laughs> absolute deference. And I have seen interpretations of the, so people have made ghost ride costumes and I've seen that some of them, the hair will be dip dyed in black or something. But I thought for mine, I want to keep all the sewing techniques completely period appropriate. So I will just be adding trim and I am hoping that the jet details on my ivory dress will be enough to create that gothic touch. This is the fabric for my drawers, nice circular drawers which I thought would help to poof out the skirt and you can see that little stripe which will really help when I come to put in the insertion lace. Now I have got quite a few laces, I haven't decided which I'm going to use yet but you can see something like this would look beautiful. And I also have samples like this. That's the dress fabric. So dress fabric is actually just slightly paler, but still these kind of soft ivories. I didn't want a bright white. You can see how pretty the Edwardian lingerie and indeed lingerie dresses could be. Of course mine is going to have this little edging of jet black just to give that ghost bride that gothic edge to her and what she's wearing. And I thought just to inspire me and to put me in the place of that Edwardian ghost bride, I would just look at some images of Edwardian women. And what is even the point of having a lingerie dress if you can't pile all your dogs on top of it? And we can see this lady with her wonderful puffy sleeves and black lace gloves and a pretty lace neckline on her and a painting of a beautiful lady in a lingerie dress. And you can see too here how blouses were also very lacy and covered in pin tucks and might just be worn with a skirt. And this lady in a beautiful lingerie dress. And here just a blouse. And look at those puffy sleeves and fabulous hat. And more puffy sleeves. And also notice the cummerbund that she's wearing. And these ladies with kind of lacy kerchiefs. And these ladies look like, they kind of look like friends you'd know, don't they? And there they are again with their dog, oh, and a man. And look at this couple, you feel like you know them, don't you? And look at this child, such a pretty outfit, though perhaps not overly practical, and a very elegant couple here. And then this lady has been enhanced. You can see that they've drawn over the photo to make her waist slimmer. And then we have this wonderful Edwardian scene with their parasols up and a rather beautiful painting in her black ruffled dress. Thank you so much for watching my video and I'm really hoping that you will join me for the sewing adventure of creating my Edwardian ghost 
subscribe and thank you to you Stephanie and Rebecca for setting the challenge and I'm certainly going to be watching everyone else that does the challenge and I'm really looking forward to it and I hope you all enjoy it too <laughs> and I shall see you next week <laughs> bye